Hello, it's me, Melissa Corey again, and we are back for the final installment in a three-part series on finishing your quilt, and this one's going to be all about binding your quilt. Um, the lovely thing about binding is a lot of times you can use jelly roll strips, you can do scrappy bindings, or you can do with the fabric bindings, whatever you happen to have at the moment. But let's go over some of this math. The way you figure out your length of your binding is to take the four sides, one, two, three, four, of your quilt, and add those inches together plus 12. That's going to give you your amounts to do your corners. So for instance, if we're doing a baby quilt here and it was 40, si 40 inches on each side, then we would need to get 172 inches worth. So, is take your strips, take the length, and then minus it by one and one eighth or one and one quarter inch. The reason you're going to do that is depending on what size width you do. Um, everybody kind of has their own personal preference. I prefer to use two and a half inches just because I like the jelly roll strips and they work perfectly for doing my bindings. So if you're doing a two and a half inch, then you want to subtract one and one half inch from each one of your strip lengths. If you're doing two and a quarter, then subtract one and one eighth. Let me go over a little bit of an example here. For example, if we were doing just a width of fabric where you're cutting it from yardage or you're using full jelly roll strips, then for this particular example, I would want to use five strips because I know that I'm going to need 40 inches on each side plus 12. So five strips, we have the 172 that we need divided by 40 equals 4.3. So round it up to five. Um, if you're doing a scrappy, then you're just going to take and use this convergence and subtracting. So if I started with a 10 inch strip, I would count 8.75 of that. And then if I added a 20 inch strip, I'd add 18.75, which would be 27.5. Add another 25 inch strip, I'm only going to be using 23.75, that brings me up to 51.25. And you can continue on down this way until you get to the 172 inches. That's doing it all the math way, or you can do it the really easy way where you just start sewing together strips and measure it as you go along to see if you've gotten the amount of length that you need. This is one thing that's really important to note, that when you are using these full size strips, that you go ahead and trim these selvages off before you start putting your binding together. You don't want any of those peeking out into your bindings. Normally when I'm using with the fabric strips, I just count them as 40 and that seems to work out really well for me. So once you've figured out how many strips you're going to be putting in, you're going to be ready to start putting them together. Now this is a binding strip that I've already made for the quilt that I've been working on. And I've left this last part open to kind of show you how you attach binding strips together to make one long continuous binding strip. And I'm going to basically go over three different ways. Every single way starts the same way. You're going to put your two fabrics at a 90 degree angle with right sides together. And the key here is that we're going to sew on a diagonal seam. This just gets rid of a lot of your bulk and gives you a little more stretching to work with. The easiest way is I just lay these two fabrics on top of each other. I put my needle down here and I just aim for where the fabric down here meets up. After you've done a lot of bindings, you get to the point where you don't need to draw anything anymore. Um, if you're a little worried about doing that, you can always just draw a diagonal line on the back of your fabric going across and use that as a guide. So then go to your machine and go ahead and sew right along that line to get your diagonal. Or go ahead and line your fabrics up again and use a ruler to draw your diagonal line so that it meets up with the corner here. And then go ahead and take and pin on either side of the diagonal line. And then once again, you're going to sew along the line. So you're going to hear me sew for just a second. I'm going to step away. And I'm just going to sew right along that drawn line. You don't sew to the side of it. You just sew right directly on top of it. But I've sewn right along the top of that diagonal line. You can take out your pins. Then you're just going to cut off a quarter of an inch here. Now if you want, you can use your ruler, measure a quarter of an inch, and cut it exactly so that you can save these nice scrappy triangles. I normally just go ahead and cut it with my scissors. 
and then you can see it opens up right into a nice strip. Then the only step you have left to get your binding ready is to go ahead and press the whole thing in half and I've already started that. You just bring it up, bring it up in half and then give that seam a nice pressing. Once you're done that, you're ready to add it to your quilt. Okay, now we've moved over to the sewing machine and we can get ready to attach our binding. Now the first thing we need to do, which I have already done, is to trim off all of that excess backing. Trim right along the edge of the front of the quilt. Then once you've trimmed all your backing, you're ready to attach your binding and because this is machine attaching the binding we're actually going to start on the backing of the quilt so you want to start leave yourself about a good six to seven all the way up to maybe ten-ish inch that you're going to just leave out there hanging because that's what we're going to use when we're ready to put the two pieces of binding together and go ahead bring it in your machine. If you have a walking foot it really makes the binding process a whole lot easier. If you don't, that's okay. You can use a regular foot. On my binding foot I like to use this mark right here as a guide and um, that's about a three-eighths of an inch. I do that because I do use the two and a half inch strip. So just go ahead and hold your end pieces and go ahead and back stitch a few and then just line up your raw edges as you go along stitching it down. Now you'll notice as we move down here all of a sudden you're just going to keep lining up and going. I have actually gone ahead already and stitched all of this down because I want to come up and show you a corner and then be able to move right into turning it the other way. But you're just going to line up as you go and we'll see a little bit more of that right now. So I'm going to move up to the top of my quilt, but you would just continue to add it on going all the way around your quilt. And then the question is, what do you do when you get to the corners? So let's go to this final corner to show you how to do corners. Again, I'm going to line it up right along that edge, back stitch a few. So to do the corners, you just want to start moving down towards it lining up your raw edges and go until you've got, I'm going to put my needle down, a quarter of an inch away from the edge so about a, a thumb width there and then you're going to leave your needle in the needle down position lift your presser foot and go ahead and turn your entire quilt so that it's facing towards you now and then with your reverse pressed in go ahead and reverse off the back of the quilt a few stitches alright now this is this a little bit of a tricky part you're going to fold it up making this really nice diagonal that should go if you've done the quarter inch right right into the corner of your quilt and then go ahead and fold it right back down on top of itself so it's going to make this cute little V I guess a mountain, whatever you want to call it. Keep that laying flat and now go ahead and lift your presser foot back up again, lift your needle up and the, we're going to come in a quarter of an inch. The basic is you can feel that seam right there. You want to get it right next to the seam but not on top of that seam. So go ahead and move it in a quarter of an inch, stitch a few more. Once again I lined right up there on the edge, back stitch two just to keep it nice and straight and then go ahead and move down your quilt. Now, what to do to finish it because I now have two raw ends that I want to be together and I want them on that same bias. So, once again, leave yourself some space to work with. So go ahead and reverse because you're going to be pulling this out. And clip your threads now. I find it easiest to kind of lay it out here. So lay your first piece up and your second piece on top of it. And then I like to use the end of my strip. Open it up and you need to measure the width of your strip so that you line it up where it meets the underneath. 
strip, line it up, and that's how much extra you're going to need to make your seam. So I just go ahead and give a little teeny snip so I know where I'm cutting at and snip that off. You could also just use a ruler because you know your width is two and a half inches and measure two and a half inches overlap. Now, here's the fun part. The longer you give yourself to work with, the easier this is. You're going to open up your top and lay it horizontal. Open up your bottom and keep it vertical. And you're going to match these back up at the 90 degree angle again. Now if you've left yourself a lot of room to work with, then you won't need to pin. If you haven't left yourself as much room to work with, like I haven't here, then go ahead and pin. And then once again, we're going to sew from the top where this corner is, all the way down to the bottom where this corner is. And like I said, I just aim for it. I don't really draw anything. So now, before you cut it, it's always important just to double check that you have done it correctly. Sometimes you accidentally sew it backwards, or too big or too small. And see how I've got that, that it's just going to lay perfectly in there. So now I can go ahead, trim my excess here. You don't, like I said, you don't want to trim that until you've made sure that you've done it correctly. And then I'm just going to go right back into lining up and tacking down my excess here. We'll line that up along the edge until you get down to the bottom. Now that you've finished tacking that out, reverse it a little bit, bring it on up, and you are ready to tack it down to the front of your quilt. So the back's already been all attached. And I'm going to show you how to tack it down here towards the corner, just so you can see how you do the mitered corners. But this same process all the way around your quilt. Now some people, when they like to tack it down, they'll move it all forward first and go ahead and pin it. I just do it as I go along and hold it down. My main goal is that I'm trying to just reach just over that basting line so that I can stitch right on top of it so that it's nice and even on the back. Getting started is the hardest part and like I said if you're struggling with holding everything don't be afraid to just stick some pins in it. There's I just pull mine over and I like to use this little teeny middle part as a guide of where I want to try to keep my stitching at. Now we're approaching this part and basically you're just going to lay your top or your bottom I should say down and then bring your top right over and you should get a nice mitered seam and which you can always go back and clip to. So once again just pull it down, lay it flat and sometimes this is going to want to jut out when you're coming at it. I just use my scissors to hold it back down again. Like you see, I just stick my fingers right in there. Now if you want, it's personal preference, you can go ahead and stitch down to keep that point down and then reverse back. Or you can just skip that step altogether. It will stay tacked down with just the two little sides. Then go ahead and pivot your foot. Start tacking down your sides and continue all the way around. And that's how you machine bind your quilt. Thank you so much for joining me on this little three-part series on how to finish your quilt. Um, if you'd like to see the finishing pictures of this quilt or a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to make this actual quilt top, it will be on my blog at happyquiltingmelissa.blogspot.com. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.